Hey, Ding Dongers. It's your boy, Mike Dog, here to take you on a journey through the internet. First stop, Pickle Cat. That's right, it's a cat in outer space with some pickles and the cat follows your mouse cursor wherever it goes. It's kind of what life is about, right? It is a great example of a dong, something you can do online now, guys. Okay, first up, I am performing right now. A camera is on me, I'm being recorded. Hopefully I don't die. It's happened before. Wikipedia has an entire list of entertainers who died during a performance. It's not a fun read. It's a spooky read in some ways, which is great for this uh, month. But really, I wanna talk about modular multiplication around a circle. Now, if you get the curiosity box, you saw the shirt that we built where a circle is surrounded by numbers and the numbers are connected to the products of themselves multiplied by some other number, cool shapes are made. A couple of fans created great websites where you can actually interact with the map. Here's how you use this. Under number of points, I'm gonna put in, let's say, 100. Perfect. The multiplier, let's make the multiplier two. Ooh, we get a nice little butt shape. Others might call this a heart shape. Mathematicians call it a cardioid. What is happening here will be clearer if I make the number of points smaller. I'm gonna make it 20. Okay, perfect. The number 20 corresponds to the number of points around the circle, these red dots. The multiplier tells us what number we multiply each point's number by that it gets connected to. So for instance, here is point number one, and one times two is two. So it is connected to point number two. Two times two is four. So it is connected by a line that passes over three and goes straight to four. Four times two is eight. So four is connected to five, six, seven, eight, and so on around and around and around. The more points we add, and let me just speed this up. I'm gonna put in a number like 300. Ooh, that's a cardioid. If I multiply by three, what do I get? But a, ooh, it looks like a nephroid named after the kidney. What if I make a four multiplier? Oh yeah, that is very nice mathematics. But let's say you don't like clicking little arrows like this. Well, someone submitted a slider version on Twitter and it is just beautiful. Here we've got 200 points around the circle, each one multiplied by two, but we can change the number of points just by moving this slider. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go back down to like, okay, 153. Notice all the cool patterns that emerge, some of which, ooh, nice little spiral there. I love that. Uh, ooh, that's an even better spiral. What's really cool <clears throat> is that I can actually give this a slow speed here and animate it, and it'll move through different multipliers. Yeah, we're approaching 54, 55. Very cool, very cool, I love what you guys have created. But it's time now for something a little bit more important. Snoop Dogg is turning 46 years old on October 20th of this year. This photo comes from my Instagram, Electric Pants. I've taken a few pictures from my Instagram and I'm gonna be submitting them to a color space analyzer. Now you may have seen this on Reddit just about three days ago. Um, a user submitted a whole bunch of RGB scatter plots of colors as used in famous paintings. Here's Starry Night, and as you can see, these dots represent little chunks of the painting, average to their average color, and then spread out across a 3D plot of red value, green value, and blue value. So up here in this corner, we've got white, and down here we've got what we perceive as black. All these famous paintings have been analyzed, and you can really get an interesting sense of how color was used and Here's the thing though, is RGB really the best? Well, many people on Reddit were saying that lab color would be better. But look, just put it into your own hands. There's a website where you can actually upload any image that you want and it will do just this to that picture. Here's some from my Instagram. Let's grab this picture of me in ink and then I will click. Ooh, beautiful. You can see the oranges from ink, but there's a lot of dark colors in that. I can change the color space to lab and see what I get, ooh. Now the lab color space is much better at replicating human vision, the way we actually perceive colors. It's called lab because of the three axes here. We've got L star, which is lightness. As you can see, along this axis, we go from very dark colors to very diffusely white colors. A star 
is our red to green. You can see that going right here. The more red colors are here and they become more green as we move this way. Uh, B star is blue to yellow. So the bluer tones are down here and the more yellow something is, the higher it is up here. So you can try uploading any picture you want. Let's, ooh, how about this one? There's a lot of darkness in this one. Ooh, yeah. You can change, of course, the number of points that you're drawing from the picture. I can also change the dot size. How about I make the dots uh, really super chunky with little, 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 little big balls. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now, <clears throat> no discussion of color and light is complete without a discussion of light bulbs. This light bulb was taken from the sauce lounge that we have here in the office. If we ever needed to replace one of these bulbs, how the heck would we do it? There's, there's like no marking on this bulb. I think there's some information about the voltage and the fact that it was made in China, but you'd probably have to just take it to a hardware store and try to match it to things. At least that's what I would do until now. Whatsthatbulb.com allows you to submit a photograph of a light bulb taken against a plain background, and then its neural network will try to determine what kind of bulb it is. Let's do that, okay? Beautiful. Okay, now I'll submit that to the site and see what it tells me. While it loads, I'll remind you that the photos, what? This is one of the worst possible guesses it could have made. So it thinks I uploaded an Edison-shaped bulb. Our bulb is decidedly more of a ball. Um, <sighs> Next, we have Benham's disc. Benham's disc is one of my favorite illusions, predominantly because we still understand so little about how it works. Notice that the disc is just black and white, but if you start spinning the disc really quickly, you might see some color. You ready? The effect isn't really dramatic, but you might notice that in the middle, you see rings that are a bit maybe olive colored or brown. We don't know where the color comes from. There's no color in this image. What we do know is that it's a great way to look at different disorders of the eye. Benham's disc, love it. I also love our home. This is a photograph of Earth and the moon taken just last month. I believe it was the 25th of September. This is literally Earth on that day and the moon at their real distance apart, about 400,000 kilometers. It was taken by NavCam-1 on OSIRIS-REx, and that spacecraft was about a million kilometers away from both the Earth and the moon. This is how they look in space. They're quite far apart, but yet so beautiful and so alone in a sea of black. It's just great. Here's another photograph, one that you've probably seen before, Migrant Mother, a photograph taken in 1936 by Dorothea Lang. It's a photograph of a mother, Florence Owens Thompson. It was taken in California, and it is an iconic representation of the Great Depression in the United States. I'm sure you've seen this many times in your life. You will probably see it again. But the next time you find it, take a look at the ghost thumb. That's right, down here, there's some sort of semi-transparent digit. Let's zoom in. Love it. Okay, I'm gonna find the thumb here while I'm zoomed in. Ho 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 ho! Yeah! Talk about spooky Halloween things. Whose thumb is that? Is it some kind of specter or haunting ghost? No. It just belongs to Florence herself. You see, she's holding the flap of the tent open, and the photographer and the publishers of the photograph didn't really like the thumb there, but the Library of Congress has the original picture. Here it is, and there's that thumb in all of its glory. Let's zoom in, shall we? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Not so ghostly now, is it? I just love that there are famous photographs of things that are only famous in their edited forms. The original forms are, oh, it's like an actual piece of reality. The actual photons that hit her and her thumb, hitting the film, all preserved, not changed, not altered, real history. Now, let's play a game. This one's called phonetics. You essentially need to spell whatever words you can find out of a grid of two letter squares. I'm a little nervous to play this on camera because I might freak out and get too nervous and not be able to spell any words, but let's try. It's a fun challenge. You can really feel that it's working your brain. Okay, play. Um, I am seeing the word, uh, 
uh, sear, okay? Like searing a steak, good. It, it was only worth 20 points. You get points for being fast and for getting a longer word. Let's move on to the next one. Um, okay, now in this next puzzle, uh, whoops, click here to continue, all right. In this next puzzle, ooh, I'm already seeing flower. I like that, nice and long, I got it quickly. 150 points, dude. All right, now here I'm seeing um, a bad word, so I'm not gonna play that one. Oh, valley, no, not valley, that doesn't work. Um, wait, val, val, valley. Oh, it worked, 100 points right there. Now, I feel like this gets harder the longer you play. Foil, good. I'm just gonna take them because I really don't wanna run out of time because that means your game is over. Uh, we're looking at uh, um, uh, stock, stocks. Nice. 100 points for that big one. Let's do uh, clouds. Dude, I am kinda rocking this, not gonna lie. Pl 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 um, pl tri trial, trip, emiv. Ooh. Ooh, uh, I spoke too soon. Perp, 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 purple. There it is. Um, man, I might not lose. You might just be watching me play this forever. Uh, pl uh, gray, gray, uh, plorus, see or sees. That's a word. All right, look, point is, I'm like a genius at this game and I'll never lose. So let's move on to our final dong of the day howtowasteyourtime.com. All you have to do is click this button right here, start wasting time. And now, the site records how much time you have wasted. I'm up to nine seconds already, 10, 11. Wasting time is actually a very important thing. Just let it waste away. Just feel what it feels like to move through time to be still in space, but to be flying through time, aging. What does it feel like, motion through time? I have now wasted three minutes and 13, 14, 15 seconds. It's time to stop wasting my time and get real. If you like Vsauce and if you like Dong, you'll probably like the sponsor of today's episode, Brilliant.org. It's actually really, really cool. It's full of challenging problems that you learn by solving. We've got probability, joy of problem solving, physics of every day. I'm gonna choose outside the box geometry. We've got everything from the abstract mathematics of origami, 3D shapes, mastering triangles. I think I'm ready for that. I'm gonna do a regular polygons. By solving these problems, you learn terms, you learn concepts, and you also get to feel really smart as you uh, learn things. Uh, which of the following is an irregular polygon? Well, let's see. Um, uh, I'm thinking the answer is B. Polygon cannot have any holes. Wow, I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't know that fact about polygons, but I learned something on my very first try. Let's keep going. I'm gonna say that it's probably two. Correct, makes me feel a little bit better. Ooh, I got started a one day streak. All right, I'm gonna keep playing this, but if you wanna learn more, go to brilliant.org slash dong. Thank you for supporting Dong. Thank you for supporting Vsauce. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.